even standards. And I don't believe in lowering the standards. I believe standards are standards. Whether you can, whether you meet them or not is a different factor. Or even whether you are in a capability of meeting them is a different factor. My son hears this all the time. This is what I believe an adult should be like. And you just did something that kind of raised it or lowered it. Now he's seven. And I'm talking about 18 to 22 year olds. My standards for what I believe an 18 to 22 year old doesn't change. And what I believe that my son, well, probably that one was 18 to 22, uh, uh, my standards for what he is going to be at that doesn't change. Just because he's seven years old, we do this down here. And he did say the other day, he goes, Daddy, I really want your, hand, your other hand to go all the way up to here. So when, we, when I critique this a little bit, understand I'll be thoughtful and I will, uh, I will be authentic. But regardless of what happens, a standard is a standard, right? BMLA succeeds on our chapter levels, not because we lower standards, but because we have high standards of moral integrity and belief in what leadership is, right? So in this process, if I, if I point out some stuff about your product or your presentation, it is not picking on you in any way. It is, it is making sure that we understand what the standard might look like and offer you a chance to think about what your standard belief is. Okay? So we our first group that we're going to bring up here, that is going to, uh, would you say a minute? A minute or two? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Okay. Well, we have uh, two of our I want you to uh, observe. Uh, now, for those at home, you will, you will not be able to see this, but on the floor we actually have the stage marked out in which you can walk out and still be on film. Uh, uh, potentially accessing up to 30,000 people at home. <laughs> okay, so with your TV debuts here, uh, we're going to bring up, uh, uh, we're going to call right now Team 1. I would like you to introduce your guys' selves and then do your pitch. And then uh, uh, please have a chance to go sit down and we'll talk, uh, I'll talk about it a little bit with you guys as well. Okay, and the group as a whole. Okay, come on up, gentlemen. <laughs> Can you please introduce yourself? Oh, okay. yes, of course. My name is Patrick. I'm the Master Counselor of Avalon Chapter in Rockford, Illinois. I'm Marco Byrne, Chapter Chapter Moy. So, the item that we have to market is this plain, uneventful looking white polo. But, of course, you got to look at these things that are, you know, nice about it. It's customizable, you can put things on the patches. It's a breathable material. Chuck Norris wears polos. Hmm. Think about that. It's fashionable, you know? And it's a polo. The great thing about polos is you can wear them with, for anything. You can wear it on a business occasion. You can wear it on like a jog. You can just you can go to a formal meeting and just button it up and wear it with a tie. It's basically for anything. The color white, it stands out, you know, like kind of like, and it comes in other colors, you get yellow, red, purple. And if you're doing a presentation, you're up in front of a lot of people, kind of like this, you stand out, and people notice you more. And it's a nice fabric, too. It's nice, uh, subtle, soft, and it's actually pretty breathable. So I would be very comfortable wearing it, too. It's really soft. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, it's tagless. Everybody hates those pesky tags that are on the back. They always get in your way, they always itch, they always scratch your skin. No tag. Very comfortable. It's going to dry easily. It's made of this, again, very breathable fabric. The water's not going to soak in as much. So it's going to dry twice as fast. Hopefully. You won't overheat. And again, the color, the fabric, it reflects light. It's going to be way cooler in the hot, you know, summertime. You know, mostly polos are very heavy material. This is very light weight. So it's not going to be as hot. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
since it's a plain t-shirt, you could be individualized to your personality by putting like what stickers and pins on there for yourself, like um, pins that you earn. Like I got my um, pin for learning my op. I could put that on there. Yeah. And other pins like earn your um, PMCs. You can put those on there, like, like putting on your uh, suit jacket. Yeah, um, definitely. You could definitely like you know put your awards and lots of things on there. It'd look very nice. Yes. And then this next one. That's very fashionable, I guess. You could say like. Uh, I do. Like you said, you can wear it to multiple events. It's very comfortable. It's nice looking. It's it can be, you can get it in many colors, and it's um, very comfortable. Good job. Thank you. That is about it. Thank you. <laughs> Have a little a group critique. Because what, what do we have? Standards, right? In DMLA, we say in DMLA, we believe that we start off with facts. Are we signposting things about that we're trying to attract people? Okay. Well, I did notice that, um, some things. They had some really great facts that we talked about in the, when I was at DLA Moore store for the past seven and a half years prior to this job. And for the last year of being at DLA Moore store, not only am I, uh, was I at the DLA Moore store, I also ran uh, full double duty running our field ops department as well. So I see a lot of these things, and they point out some great stuff. The tagless feature I loved, uh, the moisture wicking, which is the word you were looking for. I could see you struggling to find it. I could see it though. I knew it was going to come. If I could talk to you 20 minutes uh, later, you would have said it. I know. It's, it's hard in front of the cameras in front of everyone. I get that. Although my wife would, would definitely uh, tell you that I enjoy this immensely. And oh boy, do I enjoy being in front of groups. So I, uh, I saw some great stuff. We talked a lot about what? In the facts. In the belief based marketing, which we're trying to espouse right now, or talk about. We're talking about attracting people that believe the same things in very general terms in humanity. Is facts the option that we go with? Okay, just, just some notes. There are some things I'd like to point out, and they, and they had it in there. And this is why I know they're on, the, on track. Given more time, they probably would have gotten there a little more coaching. See, here's the one person that said, turn off all your cell phones. I turned it back on for 10 minutes. There we are. Okay. When you're in front of a group, you stand out. This is one of their comments. Did everyone hear that? Okay. So now let's take out a general term of humanity. What does that say if you're trying to attract people that want to stand out? What kind of term could we use to define that? A leader. Distinct. A leader. Classy. Distinctive. Individual. Individual. So we're taking, and I'm not saying I, I have the right answer. And I know that right now you, there's potentially people out there saying, Dad Nordstrom is going to tell us what the right word is, and we're going to go, OK, Dad Nordstrom. The process I'm actually trying to get you to think about isn't what that word is, but the process to get to your own authentic word. When wearing this polo, you stand out in front of a group. What is the general thing about someone in society that I, if I want to promote that as one of the things, what is it I'm trying to get them to believe in one word? Whether it be thoughtful or intelligent or passionate. These are things I want in the Malay people. So what kind of things can we take these ideas and condense them down to one word? See where we're going with that? If you, you could have done all of that in probably one sentence. So here. Where would you say that we got? Would you say we got 75% there? 
I, I'd actually say in this presentation, we got probably about 50% that building blocks were there. Okay. <laughs> Did we espouse what we believe to make see people pull people into what we think, what we believe? Did we talk about in general terms of humanity? Did we get something that is authentic and is something real that I can believe in? Okay, now I can see the other two groups going, oh, oh, oh. so uh, don't worry about it. Every, this is all learning experience. That's why we have training seminars, so we can learn. And so when you go back home, you are even more awesome by having had this experience and in front of a safe environment, which here, this is your safety net, so you can go back out into your real world, your home chapters, and do this. Okay, group two, which I believe is headphones. Oh, here we go. I guess uh, you guys are coming up here. Please make sure you state your name so we can know that. And uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. My name is Dalton Hammes. I'm the Deputy State Master Counselor of Illinois DMLA. My name is James Wolfsong. I'm the Master Counselor of Aiding Mary's Kirby Heights in Washington. These DMLA headphones are an escape from the aggravation and monotony of day to day life. They are direct injection of drive into the mind. They are, in, they, they are an inspiration of music and learning. Join our revolution and be the inspiration. Thank you. I would like to, um, I, I know I keep talking about text because there are a lot of people that keep texting me throughout this, as you can see. Um, uh, one text uh, I did just get uh, prior to Phil texting me there and calling me out uh, was, I can't believe you're going to be teaching people to be succinct with their words. <laughs> so uh, uh, that gentleman was, was wonderful. Now let's, let's do some, let's do some evaluation. Here's the standard. Okay. In the beginning, did they use the all-important statement, we believe, which is the signpost for making people say to get them to think the same, see if they think the same things that we do? Did they use that, that sentence or that, that phrase, we believe? Did they do it? Unless I missed it. We missed it. We missed the first signpost to get an individual to think, see if they think like me. Okay? It's important. It really is. Okay. Did they did they talk in general terms of humanity? They absolutely did. Did you personally, and I want, and this is this is a key point. And I want to just see a raise of hands. Be and all I want is authenticity. Just be real. Did you find something in there that you believed in that hit home for you in that presentation that made you want to be a part of it? And, and be honest, you, you don't have to raise your hand just because other people are. Because because honestly, if uh, if I didn't. Um, if I didn't hear the word, and there was one word that made a difference for me, and that was revolution. As soon as they said that, I was in. In the poker terms, all cards in, are all in. What they believed in didn't espouse to, or didn't matter to me until they said the word revolution. That was the key word for me. Sixteen percent of the hands went up. We all come from different points. Some of us are more fact-based. Some of us are more head towards the early majority or the uh, early adopters, which is where I like to kind of straddle. 
we found stuff, and that's by us doing this, more people would have bought than not in this case. Now here's the standard. Based on what you think that they did, did they hit the standard? 80%. I would actually go closer to 90. I would say, you're here. Yeah. Did we hit the standard? No. Did we get a result? Yes. Yes. Did the first group get a result? Yes. yes. Getting results matter. But the standard is just as important. And the more that you do this, the more that you'll hit the standard, and then we'll start exceeding the standard. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay, group three. Guys, you're up. Josh Starnes, I'm the Demi State Master Counselor from Stephanie Emily. My name is Mitch Beaudry, I'm the State Master Counselor of Wisconsin Emily. We believe that every man can raise the bar. Gentlemen, as men who desire to be to look professional, it's time to step up your game. Go ahead, Brown. Yeah. It's time to step up your game. It's time to distinguish yourself. By wearing this tie, this is Dean Lay standard. Gentlemen, it is time to raise the bar. Go out and wear with pride. All right, let's talk about that. We believe. Was it said? Yes. Yes. He cheated. He used the resources at his hands, right? Yes. Okay. Was it a seam? Was it seamlessly put in there? Probably could have been a little more seamless with that. That was the memorization part. Yeah. Okay. Can I do it over again? <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk about did they use general terms that everyone can understand? I talk about humanity. Uh, I did get a little uh, a great comment here is that maybe I talk a little at a higher level than uh, maybe I should be right now. Let's kind of keep this. Um, when I talk about humanity, I'm just talking about things that everyone knows and understands. A color red is a color red is a color red, right? So are we talking in terms that everyone can understand? Now, I would like to point out one thing. Did they use things in terms that everyone can understand, but did they go with the stereotype? And the answer is absolutely yes. Humanity involves not 50% of the population, but 100% of the population. This was the one group, and I knew I was going to be able to probably pick on them for this, that had a female, as a, a female youth even, as part of the, a potential uh, group for presentation. The rest of the groups, I'd like to point that out too. At no point did we have female representation on there as well. So we chose 50% of our population. And some of my friends who are girls actually wear kind of hip business suits with ties on them. There is a way to actually market this to 100% of the market, and we chose not to. Are we speaking in terms that everyone can associate with? Just an idea. Okay? We fall on stereotypes all the time. It's for the guys. It's for this. And yes, I know I get called the liberal left coasty guy. I haven't lived there for 13 years, so I'm hoping at some point that'll, that'll, uh, that, that'll come off uh, my resume. Probably never coming off the CD, though, is it? Nope, I'm getting the headshake now. 
Okay, everyone has should have a chance to be involved. We talked about the importance of that right before that, and I knew I was going to be able to probably pick on them for that as well. So thank you for letting me pick, pick on you guys. So in terms of humanity, do you think that we 100% talked about it in terms of humanity or in terms of things that everyone could associate with and believe in? How do you think they did just on that mark alone? Here's zero, here's 100. Probably 50 <coughs> at the max because we took out 50% of the population. Yeah. Okay. Now let's say here is on the total standard, how did we hit? Honestly, uh, would you say, would you guys be comfortable with 75%? Sixty-five. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be the price of red. I can see how this is going to work. <laughs> There's a lot of great things that you can do with this, and you can literally go home and spend an hour. And this is how I literally came up with kind of doing this kind of process. I went home and I I, I lined up a bunch of my uh, at that point. <laughs> Um, my son was uh, just born. So we're talking 16 months ago was the first time that I really tried to apply this outside of EMLA, and I lined up a bunch of stuff that we had gotten for him. I had diapers and I had, you know, uh, uh, binky and all these other little different things, and then I went down and wrote down a pitch for each of one of these using belief-based marketing. Would it work? And then I went to my wife and I said, I'm going to write one about you, which did not go well initially. I can tell you that she did not find the universal terms I was using uh, uh, as uh, flattering as she wanted it, um, which taught me also about knowing your market, I guess, at that point. Uh, this works for everything. Talk about what, and most importantly, talk about what you believe in. Um, we've, we've actually, believe it or not, kind of got a little ahead of schedule. This is very uncommon in DMLA for <laughs> us to get ahead of schedule. Uh, hmm? Okay. So, real quickly, I want to wrap up. We're going to wrap this up here in a couple minutes. Um, unless you guys would like to actually take a reshot, I and mean, we do have. We do have a chance to do another reshot at this. Now that we've gone through and did this, would you guys like to actually? I mean, we have a couple extra minutes. I could either, you know, sit here and talk, but I think at some point you're going to get tired of me because I'm already tired of me. Um, or we can go back and go back and get a second result. This is this is your decision at this point in time. We have a couple extra minutes here. Would you guys like to take ten minutes to re-go through this and see what we come up with and present? which means you'd be given about two minutes each. So raise your hand if you feel that you want to do that. Majority is going to rule on this. Do you want to redo it? Have another shot at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually trying to get that for you. All right. Well, based, based on that, I'm going to... This is typically where you're going to call the vision of the house, but uh, uh, Dad, uh, Dad Mike Salazar did tell me that I, in said cases I could speak for him as uh, with the authority of the Grand Master. We're going to... Take five minutes with back with our groups, and we're going to redo our pitch to see if we can get it even better. And then we're going to come back and do this real quick again. Okay, five minutes.